till now we have learnt about the discovery of fullerene how it was discovered and the various forms of fullerene we then uh, discussed about the structure of fullerene where in here also you can see that it consists of pentagons and hexagons and the bond between any two hexagons is just a double bond whereas the bond between pentagon and hexagon is a single bond right and after that we learnt about the properties of fullerenes as well as the applications of fullerene up till now we learned also learned uh, actually that infinite number of fullerenes are possible depending on the number of carbon atoms and their arrangements and out of these the most common is c60 that have numerous applications ranging from research to technology let us now study the synthesis of fullerene bucky balls are a new sensation to us but for nature they are very much known since long Interestingly the flame of candle gives off bucky balls in the form of soot. Carl Proto and Smalley the creators of bucky balls they synthesized it using laser supersonic cluster beam apparatus as depicted over here in the figure. The vaporized laser beam strikes the rotating graphite disk. This is the graphite disk which is continuously in the rotating motion the vaporized laser beam so it strikes the rotating graphite disk inside a helium filled vacuum chamber which is this one so this is a chamber which is a vacuum which has vacuum actually and it is filled with helium helium is actually an inert gas that is why we fill the chamber with helium and it also does not react with the gaseous carbon which is formed so once vaporized the carbon atoms are cooled and then condensed at high pressure helium ga uh, gas uh, it uh, generates several degrees above the absolute zero wherein the carbon atoms aggregate to form bucky balls however the method is attached with a disadvantage of low yield of bucky balls by this methodology Commonly bucky balls can be synthesized by involving either of the following methods that is arc discharge method and laser ablation method In the arc discharge method we need to take two graphite rods as can be seen in the figure by these gray colored rods which are actually supported by the copper sleeve which is this one and these are placed together at least 1 mm apart A DC plasma is then applied to it so that the carbon from these graphite rods it vaporizes and form hot plasma. The deposition of the soot of carbon take place on cathode. This process gives 15 to 20 percent yield. The technique works more efficiently when the electrodes are barely touching each other. second is the laser ablation method in this method a laser beam is used as the primary excitation source for the vaporization of metal precursor from the surface this excitation generates clusters directly from the solid sample as we can see over here in the figure the laser beam is coming from this side a high energy pulsed laser beam hits the target which is shown over here so this is the substance on which the laser beam is made incident right so a high energy pulsed laser beam hits the target which is over here and generates a temperature of greater than 104 kelvin that vaporizes the substance quickly The hot vapors produced are then directed in a pulsed flow of inert carrier gas that is usual helium usually that we take into a vacuum. The resulting particles or the particulate matter thick, thick films are formed they are suitable to be used in membrane technology catalysis as well as lithium ion batteries. These are nothing but the fullerenes or the fullerene 